Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Long time no see. I know it's been a while since I made a video where I'm talking to you like this. But in this video, I've crossed 10,000 subscribers and I thought it's the perfect moment to give you an update on my life and answer a few questions that you guys asked me on Instagram. By the way, you should follow me on Instagram if you want to see updates on what I'm doing in Paris. All right, I'm not going to make this a long intro. Let's get into it straight away. First question, how are you? How's life? Have you graduated? Are you working now? Are you looking for a job? What's the update, basically? First of all, I'm doing great. Thanks a lot for asking. Secondly, yes, I've graduated. I'm done with HEC. I'm done with all of my studies. I finished actually a few months ago on the 30th, 31st of May. That's when my thesis defense was. And yeah, so I'm not a student anymore. I've graduated. For the last one month or so, I've been working at this early stage tech startup in Paris called Ubu as a growth manager. I'm one of the first employees of the company and I'm part of the core team, which is really challenging, but it's also really, really cool. Working at a startup, especially an early stage one, is never easy or cushy and it's been a wild ride, but it's been super, super fun for me. The company is remote first, so I'm splitting my time between working from home as well as working out of a WeWork with a few of the team. So yeah, graduated, started working, there you go, life update. Second question, why no videos on YouTube? Why haven't I been active recently? You know, for the past few months and even now, I'm going through what you can call a transition phase in my life. It's the first time in my life that I'm truly not a student anymore. I'm living independently in a big city. First, I was looking for a job while also doing an internship. And then I started a new job, full-time permanent position for the first time in my life. This kind of thing, at least for me, requires a lot of mental resources to deal with. And that's why I kind of just decided to take an unannounced break from content creation because I wanted to focus fully in terms of my efforts and time, as well as in just in terms of like mentally on this new transition in my life. I actually tried making videos during this time. Like for example, the last video I published, I actually shot it in July, but for some reason, I just couldn't get myself to edit it and publish it and do all that. So then I just decided, you know what? I'm gonna get back to making videos when I'm ready. Another reason that I decided to take a break was that, you know, I lost this identity of being an HEC student because I'm not a student anymore. So what videos can I make as an HEC student, right? So I didn't want to make videos about HEC so much anymore, about being an HEC student. I had to figure out what are my next steps on YouTube. So yeah, that concludes this first section on just giving a life update and answering your question about why I haven't been uploading videos. So there you go about that. The third question is, what did my studies at HEC change in my life? This is a loaded question because frankly, it changed a lot of things. Firstly, over the last three years, I feel like I grew so much, personally as well as professionally. I met so, so, so many different types of people from all kinds of different personal and professional backgrounds, different countries, different academic backgrounds, different walks of life, each bringing with them different things that I could learn about the world from. Yeah, I learned a lot of things in class, but I learned most of the things outside of class from the people that I interacted with. Secondly, I think the gap year at HEC Paris just changed my life, particularly the half a year that I spent in Los Angeles doing an internship there. I know I'm gonna make a separate video about LA and how it changed my life in so many different ways, but it was one of the most formative experiences of my life and I can't be more grateful for it. My time in LA during the gap year changed the way I think about things. It led me to meeting some of the most inspiring people I've ever met and it led me to understanding so much about myself because I pushed myself outside of my comfort zone in so many different ways when I was there. It was basically the most amount of learning that I've got within a five month period ever. But you know, even my second internship at MAC Cosmetics was really, really formative for me as well. It was the first time that I worked at a big company, but also I went through the whole pandemic during that time. I stayed alone, you know, I stayed alone in a tiny little studio for like two months straight. It was absolutely crazy. Finally, attending HEC Paris also led the path for me to this YouTube channel and to meeting and connecting with all of you guys. Making these videos over the last year and a half or so has led me to so many opportunities and has brought me so much knowledge and experience. It connected me to people and experiences which I know I could not have got without it. It also gave me so much confidence just knowing that I'm helping thousands of people at a time and I have this little project that I'm growing, which is just, yeah, you know, like it was just a huge thing for me. So to be honest, 
Maybe I could have gotten these things without attending HEC, but you never know. I don't know. This is what I got from HEC. This is how it changed my life. A follow-up question to that could be that if I look back at my life right now, would I do things differently? I guess the only thing I would have done differently is to have not been so stressed out in my first year at HEC. Because believe me, I was really stressed and I think that being so stressed, it kind of took away a lot of my experience. But on the other hand, I know I wasn't the only one who was that stressed. So I guess it was just a rite of passage. It was just something that I had to go through in order to become stronger at the end. The next question is, do I feel like I should have stayed back in India? Not really. Moving out of India and to Europe has been a goal of mine since I was like 13 or 14 years old. So I was and am pretty determined to make it work. That being said, if you're immigrating to a new country, even temporarily, you have to give yourself credit for it. It's not easy. Even though it looks glamorous and exciting from the outside, to all of your friends and family back home, it looks so cool that, yeah, you know, I'm living in France now, that's so awesome. It's really hard. There were so many times when I thought, what the heck is going on? What if I made a mistake? And then I look back at some of my friends in India, changing jobs, even buying an apartment, settling down, and I'm like, yo, I'm still studying. Like, am I behind? But then, you know, it's important to remember that, you know what, what I'm doing right now is actually pretty challenging. It's a big risk that I'm taking. I'm pushing myself to new boundaries. It's absolutely crazy. And it's not fair for me to compare myself with people back home. Coming to a new country, new language, new social scene, new professional scene, new industry, taking on all of these challenges. You have to give yourself credit for it and not to put too much pressure on yourself. Most importantly, don't compare yourself with friends back home. You're on a different journey. So to answer your question, sometimes, yeah, during difficult times, I got this feeling that, oh, you know, it would have been so much easier had I just stayed back in India. But I have to always remember that that's not what I wanted to do. So no, I don't feel like I should have just stayed there. Another question I got is where in India am I from? So. This is another interesting question actually, because I, I would say I'm from Bangalore. So I've been living in Bangalore since I was six, but my family is from New Delhi and that's where I was born. But honestly, when someone asks me where I'm from, I always just say Bangalore because I don't really identify as being from New Delhi. Weirdly and unfortunately, I don't speak Kannada, but also my Hindi is not at like a North Indian level either. So I'm in like this awkward middle. In South India, I don't feel South Indian enough. In North India, I don't feel North Indian enough. So yeah, that's just who I am. Next question, why did I choose France over all the other countries despite the language barrier? This is a really good question actually. So I chose France mainly because of HEC Paris and it being the top business school in Europe. And also because of the marketing industry in France. There's so many global and EMEA headquarters in Paris, as well as a lot of different tech startups, particularly in the marketing tech scene, like the company that I work for right now. Another reason I chose France was because of their friendly immigration policies if I choose to go down that route in the future. Next question. If not HEC Paris and if not France, which school would I have gone to and where? This is a hard question to answer because, you know, after three years at HEC, I can't really imagine my life without going there. But if I really had to choose another country and another school, I would probably have gone to Australia. All right, so the next question, how do you manage anxiety with everyone doing something in life? I think the question that you're really trying to ask here is how do you not compare yourself with others? So this one was a hard one for me in my first year at HEC Paris. I always felt like I was a bit behind that everyone else around me knew what they were doing. They were going places, they were doing things and I just was not. I kind of felt stuck also because like, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I mean, I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how I was gonna get there. I didn't know if I was gonna get there. There was so much uncertainty. I didn't know if it was the right path for me. It was, I was just so confused and because of that, I was just stuck. But I think the thing that supported me during my time at HEC, but also during my time in my bachelor's was just having a very clear idea of, okay, you know, I wanna go in this direction and that's what I wanna do and I'm gonna find solutions to get there. And that direction for me was going into marketing. So yeah, only once you know more or less what you wanna do, you can like take steps to go in that general direction and then just course correct as you learn more things about the world as well as about yourself. But you know, the downside of that is that if you're so clear and specific on where you want to go, it's gonna be hard because you know, when you're so narrow in, you know, the kind of things that you wanna do, you're gonna be letting go of a lot of other opportunities that might come your way and that might feel scary. And that's where you also feel like, yeah, you know, this feels a bit scary because I don't know if what I'm doing is gonna get me to where I wanna go, but I see other people going places anyway. So 
you just need to have that faith in yourself. It was actually during my internship in Los Angeles that I became super confident about where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do, which was work in digital marketing, in startups, doing, doing something entrepreneurial and creating content. And I became confident that this is something that was actually achievable and would bring me success, like career-wise as well as financially, potentially, you know? This was because in LA, I actually met people who did what I wanted to do. And they actually achieved career as well as financial success by doing that. One of those people was my manager who had his own watch brand as a side hustle, which is now like a seven figure business. And he's someone who's an artist, who loves content creation, he's in digital marketing. He did exactly what I want to do. And then I also met other people at startups, which made me realize that, yeah, you know what? Working at a startup is actually not as bad or it's not actually settling. In fact, it's like, there's so much potential to working at startups. There's so much I can learn. Cause you know, up until then, I always felt like I was like settling by choosing marketing. At HEC, I got this feeling that finance and consulting, those are like the successful fields, you know? And marketing is just something which is like settling. And even at Manipal during my bachelor's, I always got this feeling that, yeah, you know, being a software engineer, that's what success is. And if I'm spending time doing creative things, that's potentially just wasting my time. In high school, it was like IIT or nothing. And me spending my time on creative hobbies was a waste of time. But you know, in my second year at HEC, like in the last one year, for the first time in my life, I felt like my personal and professional goals were aligned. And this happened because I met and surrounded myself with people who had the same goals as me. And I saw what their life was like. I also connected with people who were a few years ahead of me in the journey that I was on. And I saw that, yeah, you know what? That's actually super fun. Looking at their path gave me the confidence to go on my own path. And when I had that, I was not anxious anymore about what others were doing. So my recommendation is twofold. First, try and figure out which is the general direction you wanna to head towards. What is it that you wanna do? And second, surround yourself with people who are doing that thing, who have the same goals as you and who can support you. Another question is, do you struggle with procrastination when it comes to making videos? Oh, hell yeah, all the time. The solution to that for me is just to make it easy for me to make videos. Set up routines, set up deadlines, and set up a process that's realistic looking at your time and energy constraints. I knew that if I spent 10 to 15 hours editing every video with all kinds of amazing effects and color grading and all of that, I was not gonna be putting out a video every week. But I decided to limit myself to like three to four hours per video A to Z from writing the script to finishing the edit. And that made it easy for me to get a video out every week. So I knew that even if it's Thursday night, I needed to get a video out by Saturday. It just takes four hours. I could totally do it. The next question is about my social life in France. Did I find it difficult making friends and socializing in France? In my first year at HEC, yeah, I did. You know, I struggled with making friends. I struggled with finding people that I could really connect with. But on the other hand, you know, that's probably not because of France or because of HEC. That's just because of who I am. Because even when I was in Manipal for my bachelor's back in India, I also had the same problem in my first year. Moving anywhere new is never easy. Okay, but at HEC, it can suck a little bit more because everyone's there pretty much only for a year because then you take a gap year, people go to different places and then you may not even come back because you know, maybe some people go do dual degrees and yeah, you know, the, the, the cohort of people in your first year and second year may not be the same. So you pretty much have like one year to make friends and at the end of it, you may not even be together anymore. That's what happened to me. During my gap year and in my second year, however, it also became much easier. Maybe that was also because I took the time to be comfortable in my new surroundings and settle down and just feel more confident in myself personally as well as professionally. And that of course allowed me to socialize better and better connect with people. I can make a whole different video about my mindset when it comes to making friends. There's actually already one video, I'm gonna link it somewhere here, which you should go check out. But um, yeah, right now I'm pretty happy with my social situation. I feel like I've got plenty of friends. I've got a good support system. But you know, that happened after three years of being here. At least for me, I think going anywhere new is not easy. Making friends anywhere new is not easy. So maybe it's not because of France, but it's just generally. All in all, I think socializing and making friends in France is not that hard, especially if you go to an international school with a lot of international students, because everyone's kind of in the same situation, so you can like easily connect with each other. Even in Paris, there's a lot of expats and the expat community is quite supportive because everyone's in the same situation. That being said, <laughs> making friends with French people without knowing French, that's a bit of a different situation. The last question, how many countries in Europe have I traveled to? I've traveled to a bunch, let's see. I've traveled to Germany, the Netherlands, the UK, Spain, Italy, and Belgium. 
But I've also traveled a lot in France. There's so many beautiful places to see here. In the last few months, I traveled to Corsica, Annecy, and Etretat, all very, very beautiful places in France. I'm actually making a vlog about my Corsica trip. It's gonna be uploaded probably next week. Follow up question, what's next on my travel bucket list? Aside from doing more trips in France and Europe, I definitely wanna visit New York at some point soon. Okay, so I think this video would have turned out like really, really long. Thanks a lot if you've stayed so far. And thanks a lot for your continued support on this channel. I'm really happy to have hit 10,000 subscribers. It feels amazing. And I promise I'm gonna try much, much harder to be more regular on YouTube. I plan to make one video a week again starting now. And uh, so yeah, hit that subscribe button because I'll be uploading more videos just like this. You can also hit that like button on this video. It helps me out a lot. And go follow me on Instagram, you know, because I post a lot of stories on my Instagram and Sometimes they can be pretty fun, I, I think. But yeah, go follow me on Instagram as well. See you guys in the next one.